was trying it for first time. And I realized that it's wine and it's strong. <laughs> From Canada, it's very yummy, but it has wine. <laughs> okay, so Nita, do you want to say what you said again? Because you were All right. It. We are now recording okay. also. Okay. I was just saying that this is complete i sense by the time it's over that this would be good for us to record so we can use it with the other mentors as a part of their master assessment I think it's a great idea so what we'll do is uh just for the recording purposes oliver and zoma have already presented two books so we're gonna have them represent those um and so zoma will start with you and again just give a summary of what you did with sire's book and then we'll move to oliver and then you guys just keep moving through your projects. Yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, well, um, we want to uh, start saying that for us, even when we have been working um, in the past with um, with a team from different culture, and Oliver was mentioning this is, a, this is an ongoing uh, process of learning. Um, because we are so different in different ways. And in our case, before we were uh, working with the team of uh, SLM Lab, but as well with the um, campus ministry. Campus ministry, yes, and also in Costa Rica with the, uh, the the team of the region in that moment. So to understand that um, is very um, help us help us in our re relationship in in the way that we wanted to approach and to do mission together because yeah, we, all that culture or nation culture is affecting us in a way. Even Oliver and I, we are from the same uh, country, the same uh, small um, city, but we are kind of different. And, and <laughs> we, wanna, we wanted at first to, to have more understanding about the topic of uh, of all the culture. So in my case, uh, we did um, I did a, a summary of the book that was in Pathright, the universe of the next uh, in español es el universo de al lado of James Sire. Um, and I, I wanted to add that uh, Proverbs 23:7 um, because it's very um, it's very uh, approach of what all, all our world vision, world view, world view. Um, pues como piensa dentro de sí, así es, as he think, he, he as he think he is, this is in yeah. English, I said yeah, as, he, as a man thinks, so he is, very good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly, so that, uh, those uh, world view or world uh, vision um, shape us, so in that book was very interesting, that we um the history we have been different uh, different ways uh to um, uh yeah it's a path in the history that um uh help us to see how is our society society uh, society fragmenting today <laughs> today in the history so um, still here in panama we are more for background of of um, Catholicism, Catholicism, Catholicism. Ay, señor, theism, a uh, Cristiano. We believe in in, in one God and Christian theism. Christian theism. theism. Mm -hmm. About about how um, to understand the different the days, the naturalists, the different. I'm gonna say in Spanish. Yeah, that's fine. Existencialismo, monismo, nueva era, new age. Uh, new age, and postmodernismo. I'm going to say in, in, in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So, how this is affecting us uh, because we are a country that um, is very influenced. We live, there are people from different uh, parts of the world. And even here, we mentioned before that even here in Panama or where we live, just in the school, there are um, 29 nationalities. So it's a, it's a lot. So they are bringing all that culture of their countries um, as well. And even when we are more at uh, the Teismo Cristiano, Christian Teism. Te yeah, um, we have been seeing how the postmodern 
uh, is influenced today. So just to read and to do that summary of the book uh, has been very uh, rich for me um, to understand that it's very important, that topic of uh, the culture, to understand our culture, um, not just in our country, but in the world is very important. And as a Christian and with the power of the Holy Spirit to be very, a testimony of Christ, to do our contribution um, in this world that, we see that it's very chaotic, but at the same, uh, God is sovereign. So he has put on today um, to do our contribution. Um, so just to, to keep um, uh, raising God, Jesus, and to uh, construct construct right now. Build. Yeah, to God's build kingdom. God's kingdom. And well, I were looking for more information and I saw in this link, very interesting uh, site um, that they do a question, they start um, if God exists. And so they uh, help you to, to think and to see what of those uh, worldview are you thinking. So that helps us just to, to be firm in our worldview but to understand the worldview of others. So this is a summary of, of the book and my learning experience about it. Excellent, thank you, Zoma. Super. Well, now I'm going to, uh, to present, uh, I read another book. Uh, so I did basically the, the summary uh, of Leading Across Cultures by James, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> So, so basically, yeah, the, the whole point of, of the book was really interesting because um, the author is is presenting that we are living, we are living in a time that is without precedent, where where the body of Christ is connected, interconnected, in order to make progress with the mission, and so that will bring the reality that it will have some collusion because different cultures need need to learn how to work. We can see not only like big denominations or big organizations. Uh, making partnerships uh, in order to 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 go to the missional gaps, but you see like small single churches in a nation that is connecting to somebody in the U.S. or somebody in Africa, and they're learning how to work together. So he's basically um, addressing this that reality, and at the same time, so he's uh, so he's addressing or providing some uh, key learning experiences that he has had in the process, and also bringing some uh, context based on the or biblical, biblical biblical foundation. So how do we navigate this reality? So basically, he uh, deals with this reality of, of where, the times of where we are, uh, where you know we have world missions as never before, his experience in leadership, uh, why cross-cultural leadership is such, such an important thing in order for us to fulfill the Great Commission. But then after that, he also leads to some um, realities about like, uh, for example, the context, how it's really important to understand the context where we are, understand my own context, what I'm, what is my culture bringing, my own culture bringing, what type of leadership I bring as I'm engaging with others. Uh, we see, for example, uh, in some of the chapters, he deals with the issue of, of power, hierarchical or, or low or high distance. Uh, also the individualism, if, if more cultures are more individu individu individualism or collectivist. Um, and how do we wrestle with ambiguity? Um, and so basically, yeah, I think that for me, it was a, a very interesting read um, because it, it was laughing every time I was reading every chapter because in some, I, I never realized how important this, this topic is. And I think the big takeaway for me is that I cannot uh, believe or just uh, in my way of thinking that this is already something that I already learned, but it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing process uh, that I need to be learning in my victories, also my failures as I engage with other uh, cultures, uh, especially, let's say not only, well, globally, because we're connected to the global team in our case, but at the same time in Latin America and the Caribbean, how cultures are really different. As I think basic, basically you can see the difference between Central America, South America and the Caribbean. We have a lot of similarities, but at the same time we have uh, big, big differences. And so I think that for me, the biggest takeaway is that I need to um, um, be aware that 
this is a learning experience that has to be ongoing in every process in our life as, as leaders. And very, yeah. very uh, ongoing because um, yeah, culture is changing. So we need just to be uh, updated <laughs> to be a, a agile um, organization. And, and for us as, as leaders, as, as Christians, yeah, we need to, to understand. Yeah. yeah, that's great because I mean, one of the things that you had brought up prior to the recording that I think is important is, the, and you used the word again, is awareness. I think for both of you realizing there's a greater, you have cross-cultural experience and you just need to continue, we all need to continue to grow in our awareness of what different cultures bring both positively and negatively. And especially with your context, I mean, for where your girls go to school, I, I think you said what, 29 nations? I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. If you want to have good gospel conversations with them and build healthy relationships, that cultural awareness is really important. And as you work on the uh, team, both within Latin America and the Caribbean, but also with the the uh, vice president's team, I mean, all that stuff is, there's a lot of cross-cultural opportunities. And as you have to deal with Nita and I, yeah. there are even more. Yeah. 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 That's super. What do you have next for us? Yeah, well, the next thing that we have, Suma will explain, is uh, the, the kind of like the categories and aspects of cultures that we we kind of like identify some prototype. And uh, this is the first one, right? That you yeah. want to explain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, and the first we need like a, just a, a example, a practice, just to 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 have those categories, and after that, the aspect of each culture. Um, so we were studying a lot more about our background as Panama, as Panamanian, and our idiosyncrasy, our custom, our symbol, uh, our language. Um, yeah, because I didn't update it. Okay. Yeah, it's language. It's more. It's... You, you want me to do no worries. Okay, yeah. We got it's it. The first one, language. It's good. <laughs> so our belief system, our history as Panama is very interesting as well. Um, but we were thinking on Panama, but um, bringing those aspects, those, those categories and aspects, um, the economy uh, or ethnicity, mm -hmm. yeah, behavior and traditions. This is just was like an example or, or, or so basically, yeah. basically these are like the things that we're, we want to focus on. Very soon because there was so at the beginning. We, at the beginning we, so, we for, after that we changed it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so it became like a framework for us to keep studying because there was a lot of information, and so we want to keep it simple and clear so we, we, we can focus yeah. on something. So then what we did is that um you want to go to the cultural map for each one of us, and or you want to go to the to, for the Panama and then the team. Yeah, Let's I go. think that yeah, for 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 us for each one. So then we did each one of us, we did like a personal cultural map based on these categories. It was pretty much similar because in some way we're both of us were Panamanians, but then we I added a couple of things where things were a little bit different for me rather than Suma. So in terms of like, for example, belief and behaviors and ethnicity, a lot of that's so we were we were from the same province, so it was really similar. But some of the different things in my cultural map I identify, for example. But, but you, you can do from, uh, because it's Panama as well. We are yeah. prominent Catholic. You can go for each. And after that, you can add your. Ah, so you uh, want me to read the yes, whole thing? Because, okay. Yeah, because we didn't. Read. Yeah, for example, the, the belief part, let's go more for by Panama. So yeah. prominently Catholic background. Uh, obviously, the slash point is my personal experience was very influenced by my mom. Um, for example, uh, uh, we have important traditions uh, uh, that is really relevant. For example, I could not climb a tree during the Holy Week because I became a, a monkey. A monkey. <laughs> oh, that is I remember that. That was in my my mind. Like I never, never climbed a uh, you know tree during the Holy Week. And so these type of things, for, um, uh, kind of like the behavior, well, very informal. You know, we like we're very spontaneous culture. Mm -hmm. We're cheerful. We're loud. Uh, we have bad customer service that we're known for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we like to party. For everything we have in Panama, there's a party. There's something happened. Well, the soccer team uh, scored for the first time for the worldwide uh, for World Cup. 
That was like the next disaster. Day was, next day was uh, 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 the uh, free. Uh, free. <laughs> and people wanted it like a week free, no work, because we have to keep enjoying. So um, we said mm -hmm. Panamanian time. Yeah, we talk about the Panamanian time. Like we're we're getting late to every every place. Usually we're not. We don't go on time to 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 meetings or stuff like that. Alcohol alcoholism is is really. <laughs> We drink more beer than water in Panama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's kind of like the behavior, right? And so, for example, I included in the behavior aspect part of my adolescence was a lot of parties, you know, um, machismo, like the macho, the, the male is a male figure in, in the main figure in the family. Uh, you have many women. So that's very normal, typical in my town. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the way I, I was raised looking and you know, sadly with my father and all of that, I, I think I have explained before in my my life map, remember? Mm -hmm. So yeah, then society, uh, yeah, basically we are a very um, service country. So we are focused on services, you know, because of the position, the strategic, uh, the strategic, the strategic position in our geography, mm -hmm. we are known by that. So banking area, the free zone, we have the Panama Canal, uh, the family values are important, still are important. All this LGBTQ stuff, it's been really difficult. Only Panama and other countries, three countries in Latin America, we haven't approved these laws because still Catholicism and evangelicals values, are standing, yeah. are standing, even non-Christians, they are standing firm again that mm -hmm. that stuff. So it's still family uh, values are important. We have a lot of influence, obviously, from the U.S. because of the canal, and mm -hmm. so uh, you can see that we're also a very uh, con consumerist country. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, society, well, education is a key to break scarcity. For you, yeah. For, for, for me, me, it was the same thing. For Suma, it was the same, you know. So we were raised in a, in a home where there's, there was a lot of need in terms of, like, finances and economy. And so uh, education was everything, right, to, to break all of that. Um, well, there's some points in the history, ethnicity that we put there, traditions, uh, language, and and... and Really, for example, about the, the whole history of the nation, how how the, the Panama was organized at the beginning of the, of the Republic, uh, the importance of the canal, because we have been from the early times in the for the colonization and the, like a transit place, you know, when when the U.S. was taking the 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 mines of gold in California, trans, transporting all of that, that was through Panama. And so always there was this part where uh, Panama has become like a transit uh, point of, of uh, in, in terms of the geography. And yeah, language, I put something more uh, traditional or specific for me that many Panamanians, we speak English because we're very influenced by the US and in terms of traditions, we have the carnivals where I used to participate a lot in the carnivals. Mm -hmm. And so that's- is, very... that similar, is that similar to the carnivals in Brazil? Yes. Okay. Kinda, but we use a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, water. In Brazil, they don't use water, but in, in, in Panama, the people get together, gather together for four days and just to receive water and everything. And water pumps and people like with, with hoses, like with a lot of pressure from big trucks. And it's a, it's a, it's a total disaster, honestly. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's very, it was very interesting just to, even when we know those things, but just to read it, to, to read the history, the different aspects of all culture. And in my case, the same. Um, um, you can mention the, the specific history. Yeah, exactly. In, in my case, um, I used to be a catechist. I don't know, cate catechista. She Catholic. was very involved in the Catholic Church, and teaching other kids. In the, the same ah. like the school, Sunday school. This the Sunday school teacher, but for Catholicism. Yeah, so I was very, I think that um, very rooted on that tradition. Um, we the belief in legends. Today, I remember my grandma's stories, and that was very some of them scary, and that was legend that we 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 thought that was real and was very real for us in the when we were a um, child um yet even rebecca is asking me because in the school they they keep um with that tradition of 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 teaching the kids the legends 
So yeah, Rebecca is asking me if that is true or no, but well, we know now now that it's not. Um, very remarkable in my family, uh, the importance of tradition, especially in the Holy Week, as Oliver mentioned, uh, from Thursday, before Thursday, we did all our, uh, our shorts before that day. So on Thursday, on Friday, we couldn't do anything, anything. We couldn't do anything. So we need just to be still in the house. So it's, it was very, very rooted in that. Um, I have a mix of Chinese, Spain, and indigenous. For my father, Chinese and, and, and Spain family or background. And for my mom, Spain and, and, and indigenous, because we are mestizos. We are a combination of that. And something different for me. This part, no? Yeah. Um, we are very, at least in my house, our family, this is a, a, a common thing in, in Panama in our Latin culture. We are a very family um, rooted as well. It's very important to care for loved ones, um, for our family, respect our family, or, or it's very important for us. Um, yeah, the class. Same, the same thing here, yeah, the same know? as Oliver. Uh, we came, my parents couldn't have education they didn't have the opportunity to to have education so for them to us and help us to 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 have a good education was a very pillar in our family um yeah traditions the folklore dress that uh, you the folklore, to yeah i used to to be custom of that if, if for us more in the countryside we are both for the countryside one value, or maybe my behavior, my parents um, um, le, uh, teach us, teach us, teach us, teach us, taught us about values, the hardworking, um, to be a person of one world. If you say yes, it's yes. If you say no, it's not. The hospitality. Um, for me, maybe it was kind of different with, for Oliver, but for me, my parents, they, even when they, they didn't have education, they taught us that very market in, in our family. And other behaviors, the machis machismo, machismo, we said machismo in, in, in Spanish, my, my dad is the classic uh, machist that he is the only that had the last word. Um, this is in the alcoholism, 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 alcoholism. As alcoholism as well. So these are the typical behaviors, um, mm -hmm. very particular in our country, but in my case as well. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so that was a personal for each one of us. Now we go to the next one part. That mm -hmm. is, well, this is the categories that we use, mm -hmm. and then we present they each one it. of them. Then this is more for Panama, right? Yeah, we did that we did for, just for Panama. For Panama. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, we did each one of us, yeah. mm -hmm. then Sulmas. And then you want to go um, explain? Exp 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 yeah. Part? So uh, in the past, we have been using um, the different tools about contextualization, and we, um, in our role we use host of that insights inside the 6d model i don't know if you know i i don't know that the emphasis is more in airing um airing uh, Mayer. uh but we realized that when we wanted to um, uh to know more about panama or about the people or the countries that are part of our bp team they are they don't have those countries so for us very important because this uh <clears throat> contextualization or project is based in our bp team and um, and you can you can yeah hear so so basically then we, as, as suma was saying in this tool we had data from the countries where we have the team members in mm -hmm. the lag bp team so that's why we chose that one mm -hmm. and so as you know in the in the lag bp team we have members from argentina Colombia, uh, Venezuela, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, and Brazil, and obviously Panama, right? And so, and the US, yeah, and the US. Mm -hmm. So then, as you see, we have Portuguese, we have English from the Caribbean, English from the US, we have Latins. So it's a very mixed um, 
culture in our team. And so these are kind of like the criteria that uh, this uh, tool has. And so we basically, we were focusing on these six uh, criteria: power distance, individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, uh, uncertainty avoidance, and long-term orientation versus short-term normative or orientation, and in indulgence uh, versus restraint, right? And so based on that, then we what we did is as Zulman, uh, each one of us, we uh, select a couple of countries in terms of like the team members that we're engaging with. And so it's, it's, I select one of them and Selena is, is Zuma select <laughs> Zuma selected the other ones. So um, yeah, okay. and we select more than what you ask because we are very interesting just to know more of our VP team. And that's why um, Oliver's summary, he select Argentina, well, Panama, Serena, and United States. So and we make sure that we're covering the whole team. So mm -hmm. that's why we, we did a little, a little bit more extensive. extensive mm -hmm. right? I love this. So, so basically, well, in my case, my findings, uh, so this is my summary from the, the team members that I selected or the countries, this is Argentina, Panama, Suriname, and the United States. So uh, as you see, uh, we and, and also included Panama. So it's how, it, what are some of the things that I found similar and some of the things that I found different in terms of this. For example, well, I'm gonna just go very briefly in power distance. For example, I realized that Panama and Suriname were, we have a lot of similar things in terms of the hierarchical structures with high power distance. But if I engage with this guy, Arman from Suriname in my team, it's different than if I engage with Marcelo from Argentina because he's more egalitarian or even with Ashley, uh, our chief of staff. So it's really interesting to go deeper in terms of like particular cases in the team, how do we uh, engage? Or for example, uh, we, yeah, we see that Argentina and the US, they tend to be more egalitarian than Panama. And so the same thing I did for indiv individualism, uh, that is more like, okay, which is more collective or more individual individualist? Um, I didn't find similarities on this one, for example. It seems like Panama is most collective culture than all of the countries that were in the team uh, in relation to Argentina, Suriname, and the US, for example. Um, the same thing, you know, with masculinity, that it was like a different criteria, criteria uh, which one is more like about competition and more about caring. And so, for example, in this one, Panama and Suriname are more alike being more feminine in society, like more caring about people, mm -hmm. okay, understanding and liking each other in terms of like differences, Argentina and the US are slightly different, being more masculine in society driven by competition. So the same thing I did with uncertainty, avoidance, um, long-term orientation, indulgence. And, and so um, for me, it was really interesting because uh, I can see how I bring my cultural values sometimes as I engage with the VP team. And, and, and so what this is helping me, how I engage, for example, with the with Arman from the Caribbean. He's more relaxed, more, you know, like uh, he's late to, res to respond. And sometimes I get frustrated. But what I also realized, I was laughing with Suma as I saw all of this, is that her and I were becoming more U.S. because we have been engaging with the U.S. more and more. I still more than her have more like Panamanian roots, like, you know, but I see how I'm becoming more US in terms of like being on time or, or try to, you know, respond or whatever. Uh, and so it's interesting to see that even though this is my culture, I'm I'm becoming more structured than more spontaneous also. I'm very spontaneous. So this has been really good because uh, it helped me to address specific things right now in terms of how to engage with uh, many of the of the team members in my team. So so it was very, I was basically laughing and enjoying the reading and doing the searching because uh, it can uh, it can help me to, uh, to, so the way I treat Arman from Suriname or I engage with, um, um, with Marcelo from Argentina or even you from Brazil is different. And so I need to have that awareness. That, that's why I, I, I mentioned that earlier in the, in, the, in the summary of the book, that I have to have this awareness. Mm -hmm. I cannot treat every team member of, of, my, of my team in the same, in the same way. And how, how much affirmation, maybe some of them they need, or maybe sometimes how many of them need more instructions versus more freedom to act. And, and so 
So yeah, that was my my, my part as, as I engaged with the, the countries that I selected. Yeah, let, let's see if they have questions for you. Real quick, I do have a question. So on the long-term orientation and the indulgence, I noticed that you said you had no data. Just from your your personal experiences, where where would you put yourselves in? Where are Pan Panamanians in long-term orientation and indulgence? Oh yeah, in terms of long-term orientation, I think we're low as well. We are low. Very low. Uh, we are basically living the day, live your life today, mm -hmm. and let's think about the future later. Yeah. In terms of indulgence and restraint, I, I think that uh, we are a very restrained uh, country. Yeah, we are kind of same as well. But but uh, but I think in the practice. We we also like to party and alcohol yeah. and, and women, but we we say that we okay these are these laws that we have to to keep in mind, but we act the opposite. So that that will be my my approach basically on these countries okay. uh, or these uh, criteria where we don't have data for these two countries, Suriname and Panama. Yeah, that visual is, for me is very helpful. I like I like yeah. the visual a lot. Yeah, I'm curious about the masculinity part. Because this is not about ma being macho. You're saying no. you said that your country is very macho, but you also say it's high on masculine uh, femininity because of caring. Yes. Yeah. So here, here the description. Yeah, the description is over here. Yeah. Yeah. Can you read it? Yeah. So basically, yeah. yeah as you see, a, a high score is masculine. It's more like focus on on achievement. Uh, driven by competition, but when you score like a feminine mm -hmm. society, then it's, it's more about caring others. Um, you know, you see that, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more, it's, it's, it's related to what motivates people, you know, uh, wanting to be the best or liking. So it's kind of like, kind of like how men and women, it's really interesting, uh, operates individually, also his picture as a society. So uh, so I think that's kind of the, the idea on this criteria. Yeah, I almost, like, where did you get the names of these categories? The names of these categories, what do you mean these by that? Six, these six categories, did these come from a book? Yeah, from that Hofstede Insights. Yeah, yeah. Six, six D model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that category three seems like, from my perspective, it's confusing. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Because I think it's a system of care versus a system of competition, perhaps, or something, you know. It, but I see what you're saying uh, in the way you're in analyzing it. Okay. But yeah. from a, from a, an American perspective, I think it would that which of course I'm coming from <laughs> it's yeah. confu the 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 label is confusing yeah 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 actually uh, you know United States is very comp competitive no? uh, uh, yeah yeah Individu individualist or, or no uh, but even, yeah. uh, well in, even in the, in the in the masculinity aspect it sounds like it's more feminine <laughs> in some way but sometimes uh, this is also I think there are general trends but there are particular um Cases where not everybody's in the same point right. of view. Statistic. Yeah. Yeah, but but understand those cate categories is very important um, because uh, Nita, we tend just to see the name. I was confused. I was um, uh, surprised about Panama as well. But when I, I was studying the, the, the concepts of what's mean really uh, feminism or the characteristic or the character or yeah, aspect of, of, of that the caring part, the men are more strong, mass competition. And actually that is, re is a reflection of, or maybe of, of a culture of, of when, if you ask the women, some of the most of them prefer to be with the children or a study, but their priority are uh, their children. And, and men are the most that they going to, to work um it's, it's like uh the, the travels or they are willing more book because competitions to be that mm -hmm. and just, so those characteristics are very important just to see or background but that is changing as well 
The, that okay. is changing. That's why this is an outgoing process okay. and learning, outgoing process and learning, because the worldview is changing. Oh, yeah, that's that's interesting. And the there's a researcher at a Harvard, Carol Gilligan, that has done a lot of study on that competition versus care mindset. And Zoma, you would probably like some of her writing. It's it's very interesting, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, in my in my case, so um we well, I study in Brazil, well, Panama, of course, my, my country, Brazil, um, Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela. And as well, it was very interesting just to to see. I put a little bit more of information about understand for each uh for each uh, category, just to understand more. This is more um, what I uh, find, it's not my interpretation, but what I find in each, um, uh, for each country and each category. So, so at the same time, well, this is for each category, but I wanna go to the end to show just my find or my- Your findings. My findings. I will well you can you can see it with more uh this is a long <laughs> so this is my SOMAS so uh, summary, yeah. SOMAS finding yeah mm -hmm. um well we explored those four uh, uh countries based in the in that 6D model because there are more information about those um uh, uh countries. So Brazil, Panama, and Venezuela uh, have a lot of similarity, uh, similarity, in the uh -huh, similarity in the power distance. You can see in the graphics, 69, 96, and 81. Um, but it was different. It was very different or was very, uh, yeah, different from Trinidad and Tobago. So if you see in Trinidad and Tobago is uh, 47. So um, in Panama, in Brazil, and Venezuela, we respect more the hier hierarchical uh, society, maybe because our background that we respect tradition, we respect parents, we respect that um, hierarchical. So the power distance, we are very um, hierarchical society, society. Uh, it's a different from US that they're more egalitarian in our culture in those countries reflects that we are very um, a hierarchical society. Um, and unlike Trinidad and Tobago, where power is decentralized and managers rely on the expertise of their team's members. So it's interesting that in the Caribbean, they don't like, or in, in the case of Trinidad and Tobago, they don't like control. And the attitude toward manager is informal. So for me, help me you to understand when I work with Ce Cecil or other from Trinidad and Tobago, um, that the, the, the way that I expecting or not, we expecting or not as a team is different. So that understanding helps us just to, to have more grace, to have more deep conversation, to see where we are or how much the culture is affecting us um, versus our biblical view. So this is a very interesting um, project to understand that um, about individualistic, Panama is the, is the lowest score um, of individuality. As has to say that we are very collective a society, 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 society. <laughs> Oliver is suffering for me. So sorry. I need more. Oh, you're doing great. Yes. But we are very, and um, as you see, the the um, bar are very low. 38, 11, uh, 16, 12, because we are a country side that we are more collective. We care for family. We care. We 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 love to be together. So for us to understand that as well, we need to find some space for relation. I don't know. Well, in our meetings, in the presential meeting, we have always to have um, times to community. We always put in a big category in our agenda 
time for community because we are collective people. We need that. Otherwise, if we are just poo -poo 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 -poo, the people, like yeah, is yeah, unpolite, not polite, not polite. So again, that reform what we have been um doing um the party feminine feminist society as well society. society. As well, you see um, Panama, that is the uh, purple, is the, the lowest. But um, Venezuela, as you see here, Venezuela is a masculine, very high oriented. Um, on driven society. Yeah, on driven society, more oriented of competition. So it was very interesting uh, because uh, my finding was that this contradicts uh, the stereotype of Latin American um that we are more collective more relation more 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 relaxed caring more caring more relaxed so for um, you see in the miss universe that when they go to this contest they want to win yeah and they are the ones who always <laughs> win always, yeah. <laughs> always win yeah they do whatever they need to do so um for our sanctity avoidance and um, panama brazil and venezuela um we uh you see in the in the in the well panama is not here but in our finding i put panama because uh, we are lack we don't like in, in insert, uh, incertitude uncertainty mm -hmm. we don't like that um and it's very similar to most of the latin american countries so we show a strong need for rules for system for structuring or region that's why this restructuration of crew it's has pure, been pure. Pure, has yeah. been very hard because it's not just people but it's the way that our culture we have been growing our culture is the way so in, in most of our country has been very hard uh, that we are so help us to understand that as well but Trinidad and Tobago is in the middle and for long-term orientation all the countries show um, a low score, so um, show high respect for tradition. Um, yeah, we are more achieving in in, in quickly yeah. resolve more more not in the future. We don't think more too much in the future. We think more in our satisfaction in the moment. <laughs> Yeah, and the tradition. So I think in that point is helping Panama rely more on the traditions of Christianity that is is not allowing all these new changes, you know, or these innovations to come in terms of society and how things should be. As See, state. yeah, and, and we are relatively small propensity to save to the future. We don't take that as uh, very important. But yeah, we are thinking that. And the category of indulgence, um, the score, all the countries are similar, score high. So it's the same like Oliver mentioned. We we like more free time and we are more uh, enjoy uh, trying to enjoy the present, the life. Yeah. So um, this is so this is our conclusion. You can so based on that, also one of the things that we saw in the in the requirements is that uh, to write like a biblical based response to an issue could be a sin or an idol or a belief in, in, in a culture. And so we we want to um, basically we did like a short um, response in terms of like the take it easy culture, you know, relaxed culture. Yeah, right. And it's connected to even to what we're doing in crew right now as we're talking about the foster a, a culture of, of, of uh, corporate leadership. Mm -hmm. And so it's been really difficult. Because it's that is that is implied in our culture, you know, like well, take it easy. We're not gonna have, uh, you know, we don't have to think about structure. Let's go to Wimbledon Sand and don't think about the finances. Don't think about social security. That's not important. The Lord will provide. Short sure goals, not in sure the goals. goals. That, don't, let's don't. So that's kind of like where we are right now, mm -hmm. and so and, and it's part not of what generally is, is experiencing in latin american the Caribbean, but also in our culture like in, in, in the, for non-christians everybody so mm -hmm. so basically uh how do we tackle the issue of, of our sense of excellence and responsibility how that is going beyond that ideas or these mindsets what the what the scripture has to say about it and so the, basically that was uh the the short summary that we put here 
uh, about that, uh, you know, what the Lord says in Romans 12, 11, okay, never be lazy or, or lacking in steel, but keep your spirit in favor, savor in the Lord. Whatever you do, uh, you do it for with all your heart for the Lord, because you are walking before God in every area. God is the Lord of everything. In the work, in whatever you do at the church, uh, be on time is important because we're working before him. So every activity then is a spiritual is important for him. And so, so basically, uh, that's kind of like the final, um, the final uh, summary that we did uh, in in order to 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 provide a biblical response to to what we see in the culture and 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 what the how the word is going beyond what the culture is saying, right? And and finally, well, this is where we are. This is not not the final spot. But we will we will take um this project or or finding. We have a meeting on June with the VP team presential meetings. That was gonna I was gonna mention, mention that. that. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna go there. So the final point where we are right now is kind of I don't know if that, that would be the smart plan or no, but then you can help us. So the idea is now take all this research and have a meeting with the VP team. We are gonna meet in Sao Paulo in the month of June. Uh so um so face to face meeting and then spend a time to wrestle with these realities as you know we understand we are a very difficult different culture. Uh we can show the, the statistics of how Argentina, Suriname, Trinidad, the US, and all of that is different. And how can we uh, be more effective as a team? Because these are realities. This is not like just statistics, these are things that we bring to the table. And how we can navigate that, and how how can we wrestle with this reality of the take it easy, relaxed culture among the team, but also as we're trying to foster a culture of corporate leadership in the region, where we can see more professionalism within the missionaries and everything we do, because everything we do is for him, not for the organization, not for crew, but everything is is connected to to the Lord. Yeah, so and, that, and at the end, a DBP team is will be a reflection of what happened in the countries. So it's a, like a multiplication uh, team. If we bring our, maybe our, our patterns that is not patterns. patterns that is not healthy or is not biblical, we are bringing that. So it's, a, it's in our communication, our plan is how to create a team spirit in a global virtual team. Um, this is uh, our, our, our aim for this meeting in, on June. So uno, one is to know uh, who we, you are dealing with. So that's why we will, we will share this finding and to talk and to see the difference and the similarity, similarities, and similarities. similarities and difference of those cultures that we bring in, in, we are in the VP team. So we wanna to agree on common roles to help us uh, to bring that biblical um, perspective Per perspective and to know find a way to to have those casual conversation maybe one on one because uh it's important for us you we we realize that more um uh, com communicate and to be clear with our communication i see that it's very important because we are kind of different so we need to be uh, aware of that um we want to, of course, share what we have been, even when we are um, a power distance, we like, hi, we don't want that people see us like that or see Oliver like that. Um, we, we're trying to bring those new mindset um, in the organization that more everyone contribute. There's no one uh, shift that has to, to, to say what we have to, because people are, in the communication part, people are um, just um, waiting to receive instruction. So we want just to 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 call that um, mindset. Everyone is supporting them. Um, yeah, we're considering to do a cultural training for the whole thing in that uh, presential meeting. So your focus, your your smart plan, if I'm hearing you correctly, then is. You're going to focus on this multicultural team, present your findings here, and how can that bring greater unity? Yeah. The, and, and effectiveness. The, the, the yeah. is how to create team spirit in a global virtual team, because we we are from different backgrounds. We are more, there are just two meetings twice during the year in the presidential. So 
Yeah, so we need to know what those cultures affect us, but what the biblical about the responsibility, the do the things uh, with professionally to see more in the future, to see the next generations, um, just to share that. Yeah, that's superb. I think you guys have done an amazing job. It it is wonderful. I have a couple of thoughts. Um, so in regards to Venezuela, um, I know you're what, getting what, ready what? to go in Venezuela. in regard. Can you hear me good? Uh, in regards to Venezuela, I your analysis was that they are masculine in their approach, power and all that, yet they are moving to a more socialist society. So it seems like there's a contradiction in what is happening there. Is yeah. that is that true? Yeah, well, they are very competitive, but at, at the same time, they are collective um, so, uh, nation. No, so, yeah, nation. So they are competitive and competitive. they are competitive defending groups. Oh, okay. So this, is, this is why answer your question. Oh, that's good, yeah. Zoma. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, the strength, one of the real strengths of what you all just said is that last part where you are analyzing these variances of the culture with a biblical worldview. And it seems like to me that will be your basis for finding commonality with the whole team. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so I think that's a real strength of what you've just gone over with us. Uh, and then those goals of being um, not top down at all, but very much getting buy-in from the whole group of leaders that are gonna be there. But that's going to be really challenging, I think, considering your uh, differences. But I, I admire so much what you come up with here. I think it is very insightful. Don't you, Carl? Oh, yeah. No, I, I think it's really amazing work. And, I, you know, the fact that you already know how you want to use it, to me, is even, it's even better. Because you have a, a context by which you can immediately apply this. And then you're already thinking toward, well, this is how we're actually going to apply it. So, no, I think it's outstanding. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you have completed the character outcome. Um, I, I'm assuming the communication piece would be when you actually then present this to the group, that would be the cross-cultural communication piece. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, basically that's what we have and we wanted to to get your feedback so if, if how do you how you how do you see it if, if you think we we are good or we have to do some tweaks but we are i mean ready to whatever you you guys think and you can uh, go through drive and to to add comments and yeah if you don't understand something like you will uh, you will find nita my answer about that question because it's uh, more yeah but we put everything on the drive so good yeah, i would i would say that you're you're done you know, I would write up your smart plan. That's more for your execution of what you're going to do when the VP team gets together. Um, and I think, you know, the way the way I the way I look at it is if you think of a Venn diagram, mm -hmm. and you've got your your culture, you know, you've got your culture here, and then you've got whatever other culture you're dealing with. Then you have a biblical culture down here. The goal isn't for for you to become like that culture or that culture to become like you, but for both culture to come like the biblical culture. And I think that's what Nita was alluding to and that you brought up, I think very strongly, because that way we we really do have a commonality because when you're involved in missions, you know, when we were in China, my goal wasn't to become Chinese. I wanted to understand the Chinese. I wanted to respect the Chinese the traditions. I wanted to incorporate whatever we thought was biblical that they do within the context of what we are so we can build those relationships. And I think that comes out very strongly, especially in your very last part where you're looking at the work ethic and, you know, we're a layback culture and therefore that's okay. That's just the way we are. Well, what's the Bible say? And if it says, well, that's great. Then you do that. If not, then you move towards the biblical culture. And I think you brought that out very strongly. Yeah, me too. Thank um, you. Thank you. 
So what we'll do is I'll post this on um, YouTube, and then I'll give the link to all the mentors, and they can just watch it, and then I'll get them to give feedback in terms of like if it were an actual uh, master assessment, and then I'll have them mail you any questions they might have that they want clarification on, uh, and then you'll have we'll give you a score and i'll fill out the uh actual master assessment for you uh once that i get their feedback hey uh, carl because that form requires actual comments from uh zoma and oliver we we may need to have or you could just take some things they've said here but oh yeah for sure that's all i would do i wouldn't okay. add anything yeah they've, they've okay. given a huge amount of commentary on yes. this in terms of practical use, in terms of how they came up with it. No, you guys have done an outstanding job. Yes, outstanding. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I'll, I'll spell it all out in an email in terms of how we're gonna handle the, uh, what do you call it, the master assessment. So for, in terms of, I think for Nita and I, if I'm understanding Nita correctly, is we're very satisfied with what you've done. You've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we should uh, share with our mentors, with the other mentors, the 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 work, right? And drive. 